Do not buy Intel's new CPU. Don't touch it with the 10-foot pole. Don't even look at it. Intel finally gives out more performance. Faster load times are here. And AMD crushes Intel at this. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, Intel's 14,900KS is officially here, and just like what I thought, it's terrible. For starters, the leaks are pretty much spot on about this. It's basically a 14,900K that gets a boost clock up to 6.2 gigahertz, as well as much higher power draw and heat. One thing that is a little different from the leaks is that the pricing is around $690 versus the $750 that we saw from Micro Center, but that does not at all make it worth it, especially when we look at the 14,900K, which is currently on sale for $545. And actually, the KS model still wouldn't be worth it if it was only like $20 more versus the regular 14,900K. And this brings me to performance. Starting things off in gaming at 1440p, the 14,900KS gets 0.59% higher performance. This is average FPS, multiple games, 0.59% higher performance versus the regular 14,900K. And then at 4K, it gets a whopping 0.26% faster. And this is with an RTX 4090. So yeah, we're pretty much talking margin of error type stuff here. Moving on to more professional workloads, as you can see here in Cinemench R23, it does a little bit better. I am comparing stock versus stock performance, and as you can see right here, we're literally looking at a whopping 6% faster. And in fact, in pretty much all multi-threaded workloads, we're looking at right around that 6% performance uplift even plenty of times even less so there's basically zero difference well actually there is one place where there's a massive difference between the two cpus and that is power draw as you can see right here in multi-threaded workload specifically this uh blender workload right here we're looking at a whopping 32% more power draw. Now you might be thinking, okay, but Blender is a really intensive workload, but across 47 different tests, different applications that we're looking at here, the 14,900KS still takes 22% more power than the regular 14,900K. And with power draw like this, as you'd expect, it gets wild temps. As you can see right here, the 14,900K gets an unreal 117.8 degrees celsius when compared to the 14900k 93.8 degrees now i will say that this is within blender and it actually is using an air cooler so as long as you're using liquid cooling it should be fine and i will say that the actual test that tech power up did they were using a liquid cooler and it never got past 100 degrees celsius so don't worry, it's not like it had thermal throttling or anything like that. That affected these benchmarks. This is purely when doing the CPU temperature load so they can compare it to the other CPUs. I think that they've effectively done in the past. Either way, this is way, way hotter. So it's way more expensive, way hotter, gets basically 0% more performance in gaming, effectively very little difference in professional workloads. Meaning, yeah, don't buy this. I really can't state it enough. It's basically a Ben 14,900K, but let's not forget that most of the 14th gen are sort of binned 13 gen CPUs. So it's binning of binning, and the only way to really get much performance at this point is really just to overclock. And I'd argue it's likely an overclock of an overclock. So it's why you're seeing these massive jumps in temps as well as power draw. The CPU is not meant to do this. With all of that said, there is some good news coming out of Intel. But before I get to that, if you like being first to get all the new PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld and hit that bell icon. As you can see here, it mentions Intel APO. And for those who don't remember, Intel APO stands for Intel Application Optimization. And basically, this is a per game optimization, so they optimize it for every single game and they optimize it for each CPU. So Intel's going in and optimizing things 
for what each game likes, what each game doesn't, and this gives you a bit of a jump in performance. You can see here when this was announced, Rainbow Six Siege, 13% and Metro Exodus, 16% performance increase. But because this is obviously gonna be something that's very time consuming, at the time of release, it only supported select, so not even all 14th gen CPUs, but select, Intel Core 14 Gen S series processors, S being the processors on desktop. Well, there is good news, like I said, as you can see here, Intel APO gains 12 games, and obviously that is good news. You can see these new titles right down here, but the really big part is that they actually had partial support for 12th Gen CPUs and up. Now, as you can see right down here, what they mean by that, it says, according to the product page, APO will be supported by core desktop and mobile SKUs from Core i3, i5, i7, and i9 tier, and it should work for 12th gen core and newer. However, those CPUs will have to be manually enabled through, quote, advanced mode. Furthermore, the software requires one to install Intel Dynamic Tuning Technology software and make changes in the BIOS. So there are quite a few changes that you need to make, but at least according to this, it looks like it's finally being supported on older Intel CPUs. So yeah, if you're on one of Intel's older parts, I would definitely suggest checking this out because you're basically getting free performance. And next up, there's a very interesting new update that Nvidia just announced. First, the not so interesting part, you can see it says Portal with RTX update adds NVIDIA DLS 3.5 with ray reconstruction. Sure, that's interesting. Portal with RTX is just flat a massive resource hog and adding better DLSS is obviously a good move. But the big thing here is RTX IO. It also adds support for this. And for those who don't remember what RTX IO is, you can see it says, RTX IO enables fast GPU-based loading and game asset decompression. Basically, it moves the decompression needs from the CPU to the GPU, and this loads things quite a bit faster. It's actually very similar to what the new consoles do to load games much faster, and it's officially on and has been added to Portal with RTX. And to give you an idea of just how much of a difference it is, they actually have this video right here where you can see that RTX IO on stops at just 1.41 seconds, while with it off, it takes over seven seconds. So a massive difference here. And back to GeForce's page, it says in Portal with RTX, NVIDIA RTX IO reduces texture load times by up to five times. And it also reduces the game's disk drive footprint by 37%. So not only are we gonna start seeing games that load significantly faster, but we could also see games lower how much disk space they actually need. And that, I honestly think, is probably even more important than the load times, just because games have gotten absolutely nuts when it comes to how much disk space they need. I mean, we're talking 100 gig games, 200 gigs, I believe I've even said, I mean, just wild numbers out there. So if this can reduce that by 37%, that's definitely a welcome change. And lastly for today, AMD claims something pretty wild when it comes to Intel's newest Meteor Lake CPUs. As you can see here, it says Intel claims Ryzen smashes Intel's Meteor Lake and AI benchmarks up to 79% faster at half the power consumption. As you can see right down here, now this was originally sent to Tom's Hardware. You can see it says AMD has shared some insights into its consumer AI performance with Tom's Hardware, featuring a face-off between the Ryzen 7 7840U, this is a 15-watt CPU, and Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, this is a 28-watt part. So we're talking nearly half the wattage. And when we look down here, you can see it says up to 79% faster in uh, Llama V2 Chat 7B and 41% faster in Minstrel Instruct 7B. Moving over here, so this one is basically time to first token, but this is tokens per second, and it's not as much of a stark difference, but it is still faster, and it's faster at significantly less wattage. That is something I really can't stress enough. So yeah, AMD's Ryzen AI is off to a really good start, and obviously this doesn't have to do with gaming, but it's definitely interesting, especially as AI becomes more and more prevalent in pretty much everyone's lives. 
So while that does it for today, please do not buy Intel's new CPU. If there's anything you can take away from this video, that should be it. And of course, if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, have a great day.